Now, as I find with the phi coordinates here, as obtained from the table, I find that when I take all the x coordinates, then I clearly see that the lowest is minus 1 and the highest is the phi. So this is the lowest and this is the highest in the x coordinate. And when I take similarly in the y coordinates, I see that the lowest is 0 but the highest is 20. So this makes me understand that the y values which are taking on the y axis must have a larger scale, a smaller scale where more values should fit in from 0 to 20. But an x axis can have a suitably smaller scale with many values fitting in. So in this case, let me take the scaling initially starting with x and y axis. This is x axis and this is y axis and this is origin and how I get this. To start with, I just take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. Then in the negative side, I get minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, so on and so forth. So in the scaling here, I take small scale because I need to fit in 20 values. So I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 are the values which are taken on y-axis. And of course, with this, this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, etc. Now let me start plotting each of the points as obtained here. Negative 1 and 13 starts with minus 1 on the left and 13 on the y-axis. So this would be the point where the first coordinate lies. The next, for 2 it is 0. So when I start with 2, this would give me 0. Therefore, this is the point on x-axis, which gives me the second coordinate. Similarly, 3, comma 0 is also available here. So this would be the coordinate between 3 and 0. Now I have 5 and 6, therefore my x equal to 5 and y equal to 6 is somewhere here. Then similarly I have for negative 2, this is 20 which comes somewhere here. So the values which I have taken has given me different points where interestingly it gives me the conclusion that when I just join the points and also I have the y-intercept as 6 so this graph must pass through 6 and then like this like this this is similarly somewhat the shape of a u-shaped graph is what I obtain for a quadratic polynomial y equals x square minus 5x plus 6 would be somewhat in the shape like this. So what are the learning outcomes I make in this quadratic polynomial is the biggest question. The quadratic, the linear polynomial is a straight line. The quadratic polynomial is a u-shaped curve which is called parabola in mathematics. So my first note says that shape of a quadratic polynomial is a parabola is the important note out here. Now one more interesting part here is that 
the shape is exactly symmetric. If I just draw a line exactly in the middle of the graph, then this is symmetric to the other side. This part is symmetric to this part of the graph. Is how we understand the geometrical concept of quadratic polynomials. In case of this being a parabola, which is in the shape of, it can be like this, or it can be inverted is how we are going to study in the next session. The parabola can be upward or downward based on some mathematical properties. Now one of the important property here is also that I get the graph which is u-shaped but when I see the graph going down I wanted to know to what depth it forms a crest and then moves up is also very important. Therefore in order to obtain this exact point, the point where the graph turns, the turning point can be found by exactly taking the middle value of the both x-intercepts taken. Say for example, to be more precise, I got the x-intercepts as x equal to 2 and x equal to 3. Then I take the middle value of these two x-intercepts which is 2.5. That implies x is 2.5 or 5 by 2 is the middle value which exactly lies between 2 and 3. So at this x equal to 5 by 2, I would find the y and that coordinate will be the point where the parabola turns. So therefore, with this x, I get my y as x squared minus 5x plus 6 is what I get. And therefore, this turns out to be 6.25, 12.5 plus 6. This would be 12.25 minus 12.5, which is negative 0 0.25. Therefore, I understand that this graph moves exactly one-fourth to the negative part downwards. Minus one-fourth is exactly, if this is minus one, this turns somewhere here. So roughly, we can approximately find the point where the graph turns because this is the point where x is 5 by 2, for which I got y as minus 0 0.25, or this can be written as 2.5 and minus 0 0.25 is the point where the graph turns. Therefore, this is the point where the parabola turns. Exactly, it turns, takes a U-turn on to the other side, is how we can understand the graphical concept of a quadratic polynomial. The turning point which we call this as can also be found by taking the middle value of the x-intercepts and finding the corresponding y. So this, let's recap with x and y-intercepts. Now with this parabola, I clearly see that here the x-intercepts are 2 and 3 because the graph cuts at 2 and 3. So these are the x-intercepts and clearly the graph cuts y-axis at 6. So this is the y-intercept. These two are the x-intercepts. So always a quadratic polynomial has two zeros, therefore two x-intercepts. Sometimes that x-intercept may converge to form one repeated x-intercept, which we're going to see in the next sessions. Further, the second note I make out here, the third note I make out here is the tendency of the parabola being both upwards and downwards. In case of this, the parabola is upwards because it is moving up, up, up and going into the sky. There are possibilities that the parabola can be even downwards as we have seen, the shape can be inverted parabola. So when is it upwards and when is it downwards is the biggest question of the note. So here if I take the parabola in general form, if I take the parabola in the general form, then I say that the parabola is upwards if a is greater than 0. So a greater than 0, this a being greater than 0 implies I get an upward parabola, straight away an upward parabola. Similarly, when my coefficient of x squared, which is a, is less than 0, then I get an inverted parabola. You can verify 
by just sketching this on with the table of values. You get an inverted parabola when A is negative. We get an upward parabola when A is positive. So an upward parabola for A greater than 0 and downward parabola when A is less than 0 is how we understand the properties in quadratic polynomials.